There you go, sir. Hello. Welcome to the THC Show. I'm your host, Neil Magnuson. This is a show where we talk about truth, hope, and change, and THC as they affect each other. On the show today, we're going to have 8 out of 10 Glenn from Canamatch.ca join us for the 420 session, as always. We'll visit the Healing Wave uh, RV, the CSP RV out there, and see what's going on with that, and talk a little bit about the CSP program. And today I wanted to talk a bit about my real motivations for why I do what I do. It's about freedom. It's always been about freedom for me. I grew up with a bit of a bully for a dad, may he rest in peace. He was a good guy, but he didn't give me much freedom. And that's kind of what happens to most people and their kids. I didn't like it very much. A lot of kids don't. And I rebelled quite a bit against uh, not being free. It resulted in starting to smoke cigarettes, getting into trouble. Lots of different things were part of my rebellion. But for me, it was about freedom. And I, like I say, I didn't like very much how unfree I was with my dad and in the family situation there with the edicts of the church and the rest of that. And I really thought that once I could get out from underneath his grasp, I would be free. But it wasn't that way. It turned out that I was just a kid in somebody else's kindergarten with all kinds of different rules and things. And a lot of them I didn't agree with. Most of them I guess I did. But some of them I didn't. And the, the rule about not smoking cannabis for me, well, that made me a criminal for all my life. Terrible. Drove me nuts. I started doing these shows uh, a couple of years ago, two and a half years ago. And I started my first show by saying, I'm just an ordinary guy that's gone a little bit crazy. And that's still who I am, and that is exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing. I went a little bit crazy about bullies in the world, about people being hurt because they're not free, about those people that would take other people's freedoms away from them. And that became a focus of my life. I never got over it. I never stopped hating the fact that our world wasn't free, but it said it was free. We're supposed to live in a free country, but we're not. It's a democracy, but it's a democracy. The majority of people get to vote in people that only care about their own freedom and the freedom of the corporations that uh, will support them while they're there, help them get there, and, and uh, you know pay them off when they're done. I didn't like any of it. Didn't know much what to do about it. I did do some things. I called a lot of open line shows and had conversations and gave my opinion on it. I used to take 4 by 8 sheets of plywood and write jail the gas conspirators and put it up where everybody would see it on their way to work with the big lines of rush hour. Stuff like that. I thought I was going to end up being a fundraiser for a charitable organization uh, as my marriage ended and I had time on my hands and I wondered what I would do with the rest of my life as I wanted to make a difference. And somehow I just stumbled into activism and pot activism because that was an area that affected my life in that I had been a criminal all my life by smoking cannabis against the, the, the criminal code. I had had some run-ins with the law. I had some problems with it, uh, you know, with, with the law. I never had any problems with cannabis. Cannabis was always great. But I ended up finding out the real truth to some degree. You know, you can never get the whole truth about anything. But I got enough of the truth to realize that the attempt to prohibit cannabis was one of the worst crimes being committed against us as people and our planet. And that if I could do anything in the world, maybe I could make a difference and try to stop that. And so that's what I've been doing and that's why I have this show and that's, that's the things that's been driving me. But mostly it's about freedom. It became about cannabis because cannabis is obviously the lead example of not being free. It's just a plant. It's a harmless plant. It's a plant that has so many benefits to it. It helps people in, in profound ways. It's nature's best natural medicine. And yet, here we are in a world where we're supposed to have public servants, and we're supposed to be free people, once we're adults anyway, and we're prohibited by these public servants from even growing or using this plant. It's just a plant. It's a good plant. There's no hospital rooms full of people because this plant assaulted them. There's... There's no mass poisonings going on or of people that are, you know, using cannabis and, uh, you know, having their livers fail or whatever other horrible things might be said a person if they were using something that was so horrible that your government would have to use the powers of the criminal law 
to try to prevent people from having access to it. It is so not that. It is so much not that that it is the most ridiculous and absurd thing in our world. And for anybody who's going to be concerned about freedom, well, that's probably where you start. Because if you're not free to access what is the most benign and beneficial at the same time, plant in nature, it's been used by cultures all around the world for thousands of years for everything from clothing to medicine to food and beyond, never hurt anybody, never killed anybody, well then you are certainly not free. And if you fancy yourself as a freedom fighter, well that's probably where you start. It's where I started. It was just a natural thing for me. Being obsessed for most of my mainstream married, mainstream life, about the lack of freedom and, and how bad things were with respect to police arresting people for cannabis. And then finding out the real truth about how cannabis prohibition came around, who was behind it, what it's resulted in, the actual status of it with respect to right and wrong. I had no choice. I just did what I had to do. I quit my job. I said, I got to do something about this. Not sure what it is, but I got to do something. And I've been trying to do something about it ever since. It's led me to a very interesting life for the last 25 years or so. But here we are living in very interesting times. Very, very tricky times. What is freedom? Freedom has always been kind of tricky. Freedom, I looked up the legal definition and I thought long and hard about what the practical definition of it should be. Freedom is the right to do or not to do anything that you don't want to do or that you do want to do unless you're harming other people and that's where freedom starts to end is if you're doing things that are interfering in significant and harmful ways to other people well that's where your freedom kind of ends but that's the gist of freedom it's been complicated for a while because a lot of people want to make it complicated because i've heard people say well i i deserve the freedom to not have to smell your perfume well, then stay at home or stay away from the person with the perfume you don't like, I guess. I don't know I don't know how you resolve all those things. They're kind of minor things. But all of a sudden, we're living in very tricky times. We're living in times where there's this narrative about a virus. And the virus will be caught by everybody who doesn't do what they're supposed to do. And if certain people catch it that are vulnerable and compromised, then they might die. And that includes our old people and the frail people. And so what do you do? Freedom's always been tricky. But it's always still a must. And whether you're in a dictatorship or a free country, individuals have natural rights to their own sovereignty and their own decisions. And that needs to be respected. And I'm sorry to say that this particular story that we're living in right now has resulted in a lot of that being taken away. And I've always been against that. I think governments have a role to play during a pandemic. Obviously they do. Because people need to be told the truth. And there's been a lot of mixing of the truth here. If you're paying attention to both sides, I recommend you do a little bit of that. A lot of people, they get stuck on the one side and they don't want to pay any attention to the other side. But if you pay attention to both sides, you'll see there's a whole bunch of hypocrisy. There's a whole bunch of reason to be suspect about lots of different things. And wouldn't you know it, it looks like the people you can't trust the most are your government, the medical industrial complex, and corporations. They should have our best interests in mind. I think it's good business. I think it's what medical people should do for sure. And it's 100% what governments in a free country in a democratic country, should do. I think you need to balance human rights first and foremost above anything else. I think the role to play for government during a pandemic is to tell us the truth. To tell us the truth. And to be seen to telling us the truth. To not hide, to not hide behind rhetoric and distraction, but to actually address the facts properly in such a way as it can be pretty easy to tell whether or not they're telling the truth. Instead of using weasel words and 
all kinds of imaginations of what if this and what if that, and we need to do this and we need to do that. Well, before they do major things that involve taking away our rights, they need to think long and hard about that. And here we have where these mandates and restrictions that the truckers and the farmers and the average human Canadian and people all around the world are rising up against at this point is exactly what needs to happen although maybe not in the way that it's happening. Everybody needs to consider other people's livelihoods and well-being with everything that they do. As pod activists, we always had to consider that. As organizers of the Global Marijuana March, for example, we didn't want to make it so people couldn't get home to their families or do what they need to do during their day and, and interrupt life so much. But sometimes you need to make a point, and it's the only way you can make a point. And I'm glad that point's been made. We need to have governments that know their place. And we need to have some accountability for those governments. Instead, what we've gotten is governments who don't know their place, who are just there because they happen to be the ones that the corporations supported and all the big money people could put into place so that they could have their way. We don't have the government that we need. We've learned all along that we can't trust them. And here they are saying, trust us or else. I am completely and utterly disgusted with the words that have come out of our Prime Minister's mouth over the last three weeks. It is absolutely abhorrent. Protesting has become terrorism. The government has been mobilizing all sorts of different powers and things that they shouldn't have and shouldn't use in ways that they should not be using them. We've got a War Measures Act now up for, up for approval. We've got a government, a federal government, that's decided they sh it's okay for the banks to be scrutinizing the accounts of their, their clients. And if you're supporting something that is protesting or terrorizing, depending on who you're looking at or how you're looking at it, well, they can seize your money and worse, put you in jail. It's always been that one person's terrorist is another person's freedom fighter. It's always that been that way. Right now, these terrorists are the freedom fighters that we're putting up against people that have harmed us in enormous ways. These lock, lockdowns and mandates, restrictions that we have been imposed on us, have resulted in millions of people suffering serious and severe hardship. We've lost tens of thousands of small businesses. So many people have lost their housing and their jobs because of this. There is a huge economic price to pay. There is a huge societal price to pay as the divisiveness that have been absolutely created and orchestrated by our governments and by the media. I can't even describe the level of divisiveness. Friends that are now enemies, lovers that now hate each other, people that are willing to do violence to each other in, in, the, in the public realm and in the private realms, the, the, the verbal violence that's being spewed on people on both sides from both sides, all of this plays right into the hands of the people that want to manipulate us and control us and exploit us. You know, the billionaires have done quite well during the pandemic. The big box stores, never been better. Online, huge retailers, doing pretty well. But so many other people are hurting so bad because of measures that, well, the narrative is we've got to save people's lives. We've got a whole bunch of people dying. You're going to stand up every day and tell me, tell us how many people died from this particular thing. I don't know if many people really understand that a whole bunch of people die from just about everything that there is every day. We have hundreds of people that die in British Columbia of alcohol poisoning every year. We've got people dying from type 2 diabetes and cancer. Holy smokes. Should the government be up there on a podium? Every evening, telling us how many people died from all these things and what sort of restrictions they're going to put on people because of it. No more sugar for anybody. 
No more cigarettes, no tobacco. None of that stuff is good for you. You can't have it anymore because the government said so. Do you think that would work? That never works. All that does is cause certain special interest groups to start making a whole bunch more money on the situation, money that they then use to leverage their situation and make it even more powerful. And on and on it goes, and here we are. We need government that will stand up for the individual sovereign rights of individuals, that will cater to and cower to no group other than children, that will recognize that their responsibility is to make sure that we are all free to make the choices that are right for us as we go. But if those choices involve harming somewhere else, someone else, then they can do something about that. And that's all fine and well. But the world that we're living in right now is tyrannical. To hear the words coming out of our Prime Minister's mouth about good people, slandering them, calling them racists, and numerous other slurs against what I know to be a number of good people. I'm sure there's people that have joined the mix that are questionable in certain ways. But they're not organizing it. They're not, they're not everybody. They don't stand for everybody. The vast majority of people that I see as I look and as I listen to what's being said are good people that care a lot. They care a lot about basic human rights and freedoms. They care a lot about our economy. They care a lot about what the role of government is supposed to be in a free country. And they're standing up and saying something about when it's not right. And it is not right. So good on people for standing up and saying something. I hope they can do it in a way that that, that gains public opinion and, pu and public support. But we're living in a world where the media is not reporting most of that. I've been disgusted by the mainstream media as well. I look at what the, the non-mainstream media is putting out there. They're putting out their interviews with actual people. They're going down to where things are happening and they're talking to people. And then they're letting us decide for ourselves what we think of what we heard there. The media, they're telling us what to think. They're telling us what the narrative is. The, ma the mainstream media has a whole bunch of made-up terms that they share amongst themselves and spew repeatedly to cause doubt and suspicion and hate and all of that stuff. I'm hoping we're all much more critical you know, readers and observers than we used to be. Because we need to be. In this day and age, we really, really need to be. You needed to learn how to read between the lines a long time ago. And if you did read between the lines, you could see what some of the agendas were. And now you can see where they've gone. We're in trouble as a people. We're in a, we're in a crucial, crucial point in the history and the evolution of human beings and societies on this planet at this time. We have technologies that are going to allow for all kinds of different things. Hopefully for communication hopefully for finding the truth, but ultimately in many cases for surveillance and data collection that will be used against us. And, and the way they turn things around, it's 419, you got one minute, I got one minute. I wish I had more, there's so much more we could say. But you look at how they're turning things around, you know, turning protesters into terrorists. The narratives around what happened at the Capitol building, the narratives around what are happening with the truckers. Reading between the lines, becoming a critical observer of what we're being fed by the corporate mainstream media, by the medical industrial complex, and by those that are in governance, is extremely crucial at this point in time. We all need to be smart. We all need to have our eyes wide open. We need to be awake, not necessarily woke. We need to be able to make good choices coming up in the future here, because I think we're going to be put to the test. We have moves being made by government that need to be countered, that need to be challenged. I hope there's good people willing to do that. I hope that everybody that's got a voice isn't cancelled. And it's coming up to 420. Thankfully, we do get a little bit of a break once in a while. Cannabis uh, provides all the things you need. Its, its main role in our, our bodies is to maintain homeostasis by supplementing our endocannabinoid system. And it's that 420 pause every day that uh, allows us to take a little bit of a break from the, uh, the horrors, <laughs> if you will, of the realities of some of the things that are uh, 
are going on around us. So at 420, it is. Glenn Wells is with me as always, my 420 guest for the 420 session. How are oh, you doing, sir? Sir, let me do a little adjusting here. You there adjust. we go. <laughs> and Neil is not well today no. and is taking the day off. So yes, we all, we're, we're okay. flying blind and on and by the seat of our pants. Well, not so blind. We've done this before. I can't see a thing. You can't see God a thing? blind as could you be. You can't see you? I can see Who you. is that there? <laughs> here. You want to see? Oh, how are you guys all doing? Well, there you go. Good to see you. You should put some pants on, is, by the way. Is that you better? Know, just because you're sitting in your living room, you know, doesn't mean we can't see you. Is that better? That's not better. <laughs> it's bigger. It's bigger, eh? <laughs> you're wearing glasses so, I, now. I, I hear it's your birthday today. Who told you that? Oh, some guy on These Facebook. These rumors, you know. I think Zuckerberg. Yeah, I'm yeah. not Happy old. Birthday. Yes. I refuse to be old. Come on. Uh, but it's also, you know, on the other side of it, it's also <laughs> Isabel's birthday today, it too. Is. She's Isn't 10 years old. Thing, eh? Yeah, so she hit double digits today, wow. and so did you. <laughs> I have now completed 15 years of bonus time. You have, yes. If you make it to 50, from there on it's bonus time. I thought that was the end of it, but I realize now, 15 years in, that I think I'm entering danger time. <laughs> so, so what I've been thinking is, before 50, you think you got your whole life ahead of you. After 50, you keep wondering if you're going to make it to the next day. <laughs> yeah. Right, because right, it's last year. Oh, right. You realize how fragile life is. I lost uh, one of my best friends. He was uh, 40 years old. 42 years old, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary Steinbart uh, was my best friend for a number of years. He was the best man at my wedding. I was the best man at his wedding. And uh, and he died of a heart attack at 42 years of age. Wow, uh, yes. Yeah, yes, so you just never know when it's going to happen. Prior right? to that, I mean, I'd lost my grandfather and I'd lost uh, one friend, uh, Susan, wow. who died of cancer. And, I, you know, I was very fortunate in my life. But, um, yeah, Gary passing away started a long line of, of people that have passed away. And in the last few years, it's been just incredible, really. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, as you get older, you appreciate that every day could be your last. And, you know, not everybody dies of old age, obviously, or even heart attacks. You, you just never know. You just never know. You just know. never yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, life is fragile, and it is to be uh, cherished. Yes. I came up with a new term. Oh, what's um, that? I'm working with a great group of people. Um, is these it are people. You're 65. You came up with this new term. I don't know. It was yesterday. I wasn't 65 yet. Yeah, I, I had one more day to go. Uh, working with this great group on the FICO Institute. You're yes. going to be hearing a lot about oh, that I'm coming so up in the future here. Uh, Legacy 420, a bunch of other really, really good people are working on getting uh, low barrier access uh, to the best quality cannabis medicine, which would be FICO, full extract cannabis oil. Um, you know, made the proper way is really important and, uh, and, and made in ways that address certain specific issues so that you would have maybe a high CBD, a high CBN, a high CBG, a high THC version of the full extract cannabis oil. Uh, we're going to be getting, getting all the science down pat. We're going to be collecting all kinds of data on that. So I'm working with a great bunch of these people. And uh, it came up yesterday that uh, the, the word compassion, and I, I, I separated it a little bit, and I decided that what we need to do is we need to approach things with calm passion. So there you go. There's the, there you there's go. the term, calm passion. So I, I get to sing happy birthday to you? You are can you, if are, you like. Yeah, or are you going to sing too? <laughs> I don't, you I don't require sing anything. I'll sing to you while you sing to me. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, look at that. Somebody wants to call me. That must be Chang's uh, Taekwondo. Yeah, yeah from, I wonder, uh, I wonder why, but he, I guess he forgot that I'm Well, not, he wanted I'm, to join us in singing Happy Birthday to Isabel, because no, Isabel's that, a Taekwondo <laughs> girl, isn't she? <laughs> I see it. That would have been her instructor calling on the phone. So I, I get to sing Happy Birthday to Isabel while you're singing Happy Birthday to me just so I can keep you on key? Is that what's going on? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can do it, yeah. Well, yeah, maybe, yeah. Oh, Mary wants to join us. What Should we join join in, Mary? I, how do we join in? Well, people? we just touch no this button right here. And, right. Then, and then we can hear Mary. And... Yeah, we're going to add her. And then we're going to add her here. Couldn't, oh, they couldn't do it. Couldn't they, do won't, it. they won't let us do it, Mary. But thanks for trying. <laughs> this is why I hate technology and yes. I've never learned how to use it. Because, oh, uh, I know how to use it. It just wouldn't work for us. Yeah, and that's what happened. I, I, I've lost all kinds of stuff. I pushed the wrong one buttons. One more time. One more time. Can we try her one more time? Okay. Oh, that's Douglas. We're doing our own production here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, but we don't need another baritone. <laughs> we, we could use an alto and a his, soprano. His, his, his internet doesn't work so well, so it probably won't even work there. So it'll be a choppy baritone. This will be good. It could be. This will be good. I, I, like I don't think it's going to work. Oh, it did. There you are. Wow. Say something. Say something. Oh. <laughs> it Welcome worked. to the show. Hey, can the people at home see him too? Yes. Oh, yeah. wow. Right. That's right. fantastic. See, look. look, there he wow. is. And, and looks like you got a haircut. Or is it just pulled back? 
Oh, pull back. Oh, pull back, eh? Yeah, he did have one of them. Oh, cuts. no haircut yet. No another haircut another haircut half yet. an inch we got to go. Oh, wow. Isn't this amazing? Thanks to you, Doug. We've now figured out how we can have guests interviewed on the show again, even though we're remote all the time. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> my phone. I don't know if it'll work so much on a Neil's phone. Oh, Dan, that's the thing phone, is right? it doesn't work on a Neil's phone. So we're going to use your phone next week. How about that? That yeah, doesn't well, me. It, it doesn't work normally again. work, yeah. but this time See, when you're old like me, you get to do all kinds of shit. What's that? <laughs> I said, normally that doesn't work. I was surprised it worked this time. Yeah, yeah usually your internet doesn't carry a, a sharing signal, so. We, we tried with Mary first. Hey, no, no, you should stay exactly where you were because the, the, the pot leaf on the ceiling behind you gives you that perfect cannabis crown. You look, yeah, you look yeah, like yeah. the Statue of Liberty up there. The Statue of Cannabis. The Statue of Cannabis <laughs> Liberty. That's amazing. That's beautiful. <laughs> Oh, How you Jerry, doing, Neil? Jerry, Jerry, Jerry what? Hey, over here. Over no, here. we can't over see you, Jerry. Over here, all the way over. Yeah. Hey, Daddy, 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 we got a bunch of videos of you doing all kinds of crazy stuff in front of this uh, city hall over here. So he's going to blackmail you, is and what he's gonna saying. He's going to blackmail you. You're in big trouble now. But, but it came down Good to, to say happy birthday for Neil, but he doesn't want me singing. Happy birthday, birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, Daniel! Happy birthday to you! I just wanted to come down and say hi. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jerry. I want everybody to know that on this day, there's at least a million other people that also share this birthday. So I'm one in a million. And this, is, this is for me. You're going to flip when you take this trip. Yeah. Check this out. You're going. To, this is very, very appropriate. Jen and I have uh, have decorated it for you. Wow. And this is a gift from me, and she bought the lottery. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're going to love this. This is cool. You guys are going to really love this. This is a very appropriate gift. Uh, <laughs> the big reveal. Yeah. I just I just it's took a thing. This is yeah. this is uh, this is cool. This is pretty cool here. This is good. Yeah, we, we, we did it up good for you. Oh, oh my goodness! Lift six. it up. There you go. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. We got THC on oh, there. We got. I even put a Canadian sticker on the bumper for you. Hey, they got the bus to go back east now. There we go. They just yeah. a bigger version nice. of it. Paint it all up just like that. I gotta tell That's you, what I, need. I love that the symbol of freedom, that the truckers and all the people supporting the truckers, it's certainly not just truckers, but the symbol of freedom is the Canadian flag. Yeah. I think that's extremely appropriate. Mr. Trudeau, I think you should resign. There you go. I think when you're there you, go. Go, you got your THC, right? You, you put your mouth there, you burn oh, it I, there. I, yeah. I, know, I know how to use a pipe uh, right, right, right. That's well. a freaking pipe? Yeah, that's I wasn't pipe. born yesterday. Oh yeah. I was actually you born today. But yeah. We should give him a oh, little let's just go back smoke it out. Oh, guys, happy birthday, <laughs> well, we Neil. Hey. On there. What? He's, he's, I'll he's, let you guys get back to your show, and I'll let you back. Oh, have a great sorry birthday, for ignoring you, Doug. Yeah. No worries, guys. No worries. This was a, a run through. We'll do it better next time. Yeah. There we go. I'm going to smoke my bus. <laughs> you need a little bit of blood. Oh, yeah, right, buddy. You you guys guys take care. Hey, take Thanks, care Sam. Thank you yep. very much. Have a great one. Oh, hey, you know what's that? See you guys later. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that one more time, Jerry. Yeah, uh, there you go. There you go. We're going to do this like this. Yeah. Neil, I was uh, had the privilege of uh, doing some videos for this guy. We're and there's a whole bunch those. coming down the pipe, so enjoy. Yeah, we're going to be seeing those coming up. Jerry has been uh, documenting what we did oh, at the Van yeah. Du with the CSP uh, right from the early days there. So that uh, he's provided that all on a stick, uh, edited and, and put together. There's like thousands, of, well, hundreds anyway, of images there, videos, pictures. And we're going to be getting to that and uh, and putting that all together for you. I'm going to smoke my bus now. I need a screen. Yeah. You need a screen? So I think it's a small hole. It might be all right. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, it might go a little bit in there for the first, but do you have screens? Oh, I probably not just, that you can just we'll find quickly, that, right? We'll stick that in there in that yeah. hole. Break that up a and little bit. Break some of this up around it. Well, there you go. I've never smoked from a bus before, but we put the CSP on there for yeah. you. It was very, very like, this is a good thing. <laughs> it was uh it was right about if we go on our trip i think we should put this on the front uh, on the dash 
I just, absolutely. I, I just right there, oh, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that could be our little, we'll, our little. We'll get off it regularly. We'll, <laughs> yeah. We'll have our, people come and uh, give us things to put in there. Our mascot. <laughs> it was uh, about 17 years ago now, I believe, that uh, we had just opened the Herb School just a block over there, yeah. uh, very similar to what we got going on here. And uh, I ran into a young lady there. She became a customer, and then she became my girlfriend uh, for 15 plus years. Wow. And, uh, that was right around this time that I met her. I just wanted to give a little shout out to Roxanne. Uh, I saw her last night. She gave me a big hug for uh, oh, for my birthday. Hey, Roxanne. And uh, yeah, so hey, uh, Heller. <laughs> you know, she, behind every great man is a good woman, and, and Roxanne was a good woman and, and supported me a lot in my trips across yeah, Canada I've and in all my activism and everything that I did. And uh, yeah, so a big shout out and a thanks to Roxanne for. Uh, Helping me with all, all all that I needed on that side of my life to uh, to allow me to do what I did on the other side of my life. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Shout out to Roxanne. Um, all right. So there is a breather so, hole on the back right here. Oh, there's a breather hole. Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah, there's a muffler on it. <laughs> all right. Cheers. Nice. <laughs> We got a bunch of kids in the bus, but that's okay because they're epilepsy kids and they needed the cannabis to help them with their okay. seizures. I want you to look that up and find out how cannabis helps kids with seizures because that's important. Also kids with cancer and and other things. Oh, wow. How's it smoke? Good? All right. It feels like a cigar. It feels like a cigar. <laughs> oh, you're it's, sure. It's, it's big like that. Fantastic. Fantastic. I haven't done that in a while. Fantastic. <laughs> there we go. She's a popping along with CSP, man. <laughs> I love it. See you, Jerry. Thank See you very you, much. Sir. Yep. Hey, guys, have a good one. You too. Yep. I'll see you next week. Say hi. Brian and I are in the same bubble, by the way. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where you going? And, and cannabis uh, and and smoke and fire and all of that is all uh, <laughs> antiviral. I've been antiviral. You know, I don't know what to think about this. I know that a lot of groups have seized upon the the whole uh, pandemic and used it for their own great greedy grain gains against us. It's horrible, but uh, yeah. But I know that you know I personally got. I think fairly smart about it, touch wood, right off the beginning, because I wanted to know, I wanted to listen to the experts, I wanted to understand how viruses can be contracted among, uh, between people. Um, I stopped touching my face, I started staying a bit of distance, I started, you know, all these really? things. Yeah, I don't breathe whenever somebody walks past me, right for two years now, I, I, I hold my breath basically, I just, I just do. It became a habit, uh, I became a little concerned about it, and then it became a habit, and now I just live my life a little differently. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of anybody. I don't like little bugs. My second best friend, he died when he was 38 years old, a year after my, my friend who died at 42 of a heart attack. And and um, Dan, Dan Gork, he died because he got a motorcycle accident and took his spleen, and when he got the Hong Kong flu that comes through Vancouver in February, uh, it killed him because uh, he didn't have a good immune system with his... Uh, the spleen being gone. So I got quite upset about it at that time, although I certainly didn't understand the dynamics of it really or fear that it would be anything that we would have to ever live with like this. But I was very angry that something that I could not see, some microscopic little fucking murderer, sorry, Annie Barbie, <laughs> but, uh, you know, murdered my friend. Yeah. And uh, and here we are now, all these years later. I mean, Dan's been gone since, uh, since 1995, 1996. Gary died in 1995, and uh, here we are again with this uh, invisible murderer yeah. that turns out has always been there, that there's always been the potential for catching something that could kill you, yeah. and especially if you're old, uh, uh, compromised, whatever, yeah. you know, these things can really kill you, and it's been going on for a long time. If you look up the statistics for people that died of the common flu prior to COVID, Almost similar numbers. It depends on which numbers you believe. I'm not sure what numbers to believe anymore. We're not being told the truth about a lot of different numbers. So I don't know what to believe. But I do know that prior to this, we tracked how many people died from all kinds of different things. And you would be shocked 
I was. I've been on those websites because I always wanted to know how many people died from cannabis, and they were never on there. Nobody ever died from cannabis. But I did get to find out that people die from all kinds of things. They die from toilet seats and hairbrushes and you name it, people can die from it. It's, it's just the craziest you thing. You die in the water, ground, right? Yeah. yeah. And we've got, we've got you know, almost 400 million people living on this continent here. There, there's several billion people around the planet. You start gathering statistics about how many people died from toilet seats, you'll be shocked. It'll sound like a lot, but in comparison, it's not very many. So even when there's a thousand people in a province of four million people that die because of a, a virus, that's not a lot of people. And when most of those people are people that are compromised immune systems, uh, elderly, uh, you know, going to die from something soon anyhow, you know, it, it's not that shocking. So anyway, I, I don't want to comment on all these things because I don't have the facts. I wish I did. I wish I have lots of facts. I have facts that, that come from the CDC. I have facts that come from an amazing group of world-renowned doctors that are on the other side of this that tell us that we're not being told the truth. There are, there are so many people on, on, on both of these sides saying opposite things. I don't know what the facts are. I have no idea. I've learned what I've learned. I'm a, a living human entity that can be affected by a, a microscopic murderer, and it could come you know, more easily through someone else's close contact than any other way. But you got to be careful, I guess, about other some things. Although it's not really passing itself off through doorknobs and and things and stuff. It, but it could. Who knows? It's some other new virus or a, a mutated version. Who knows? Yeah. So, all I'm saying is, is that the role of government is to tell us the truth, to give us the right advice, so that we can make the right decisions for ourselves, and then they must allow freedom to reign. Period. Period. Because governments over millennia have done nothing if they haven't proven that they cannot be trusted. And given the, the powers that they are taking for themselves now and exercising as if they are able to do these things, they're not. Much of what they've done, they're not able to do based on the freedoms that we all thought that we had and the democracy that we thought we were living in. But they're doing it. And they do it carte blanche, blank check. They don't seem to care. There are no repercussions. There is no accountability very little transparency. But what we do know is that they're abusing their power in horrendous ways. They are murdering people. Just look at the opi opioid epidemic and they are murdering people. It's their drug policy that, that's killing people. And, and they're the ones who could be doing something about it, like supporting actual solutions, like low barrier access to high dose cannibals, cannabis, <laughs> cannibals. cannibals. <laughs> are you hungry? <laughs> I'm old now. I get away with saying, I'm just, I'm just saying whatever comes to mind at the time. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh -huh. We cannot trust our government, damn it. I wish we could. I want to one day. I hope that we reset democracy in a way that does not allow for the corruption that we're living under right now. And, and when, when, when you say freedom, it, that's such a broad word because we have the freedom to protest, but we don't have the freedom to choose what goes in our body. So what you're saying is we have some freedom. Yes, I think we have some freedoms, right? Having some freedom is not having freedom. No. It's having some freedoms. Yes. What we want is freedom. Yes. Not freedom to hurt other people, because no. that is where there needs to be a defining line and a, and a wall built and whatever, and, yeah. and you know, there's repercussions, da, da, da. Yeah. But up until that point, people get to be who they are and do what they want to do, as long as they're not hurting somebody else. And, and, and even, you know, we, we don't live in a black and white robotic mechanical world, although we have black and white robots and mechanics in this world. But we are human entities, which is very, very different from these things. We are, we are fluid units moving through time with thoughts and ideas and memories and plans and acting upon the physical world and the physical world acting upon us in, in ways. But the two, the, the mechanical and the black and white side are, are separate from the human feeling thinking side. And there needs to be humanity in the way that laws are enforced and rules are enforced. Rules are black and white. You can do this and you cannot do that. And that's that for that. Well, it doesn't always, a, a rule is there for a good reason, okay? There was a good reason why that rule got put there. You can't run around a swimming pool on cement when it's wet because somebody died. Some, some kid hit his head and died when he fell on the cement. 
because that's how things get done in this world. People die and then we make changes. Usually it doesn't happen before that. Every red light intersection that you go through has the red light controlling that intersection because somebody died mm -hmm. at that intersection. Governments almost never put in a red light controller until enough people die in that intersection. And that's just the truth for rules. Rules are there because something bad happened and there became a reason to put that rule in there. Most of the time, it's probably a good idea that human beings follow the rules, you know, as they're put down there, even though maybe the circumstances have changed and, 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 and the circumstances that caused that rule to be put in place are no longer there or aren't there during that particular application of the law. You know what I'm talking about. Enforcing things by the book doesn't always let humanity have its way with what right and wrong would be there. If it was your uncle that was enforcing the rule there, and he wasn't some you know Nazi disciplinarian asshole uncle, he was like a good guy who liked you and he's your favorite uncle and everything, you know, the, the outcome might be completely different than what it would be if it is some police officer who didn't get laid that morning and has got a, a hard on for people that, uh, you know, have a haircut the way yours is and they don't like the color of your skin or the, 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 the cut of your jib or whatever it is. Up there, like, oh, man, it yeah. happens over and over and over again, unfortunately, Walking you know. Here. So there needs to be humanity involved in the making of rules and the enforcing of rules. And freedom lies in having the, the ability to live in a world where you as an adult get to make a decision. Yeah. If you decide to walk across the street and there's no cars coming, you damn well should not get a jaywalking ticket. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. It's not up to the authorities to send a message to other people by giving you a ticket to keep everybody in line when you did nothing to endanger <laughs> anyone and didn't hurt anybody. It's like you, you just wanted to get to the other side of the road there. So. I'm not in favor of massive jaywalking, but I certainly am in favor of people being able to cross the street if they're full-grown adults in control of their faculties and they decide that what's right for them and it's not going to put anybody in danger, risk anything, or encourage other people to do it. There's like, you know, spitting on the, the gray areas of enforcement and law, right? Yeah, like, you know, on the sidewalk. Nobody's going to slip on that. So why is the law that it gets, he gets spit yeah. on the sidewalk? There, well, there certainly shouldn't be any significant penalties for it. Yeah. And we don't need lawmakers for those types of things anyway. I know. <laughs> if, 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 if there's people that are grossly spitting in the direct path of other people walking into it, be... we need to live in a world where we're able to speak our mind and nicely say to that other person, that's not cool. You yeah. know, a little bit of humor, maybe some way. And if you don't do it, somebody else will. I stand up and speak on behalf of people that look like they're too timid all the time. Uh -huh. yeah. When I see people that are taking abuse and they don't deserve it, and I can see that they're not going to say nothing because they're, 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 they're intimidated, yeah. I say something on their behalf. And I'd like to live in a world where people are willing to do that. I'm never nasty about anything with anybody, especially in those situations, because that's the right way to be. You be nice to people always, even the people that aren't being nice. You know what? Most of the people that aren't being nice, they either think they have a good reason for not being nice, and perhaps they do, or they don't. They don't know they're not being nice, and that's what's most of the time I find. People don't mean to inconvenience other people, scare other people, or or any of that type of stuff. They just don't understand. So when you point it out nicely, that hey, that little old lady there was just a little bit, you know, feeling very insecure when you came and did what you did there. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh man, I didn't, I didn't realize that. I'm very sorry. And yeah. almost well, sometimes, every, sometimes they're not always like that. Not always. No, some of them are just like, I don't fucking care. That's right. Some, <laughs> people, some people are having a bad day. Some, old age some people are just like that. that. I didn't want to cause a problem, right? So, there's but you know what else I found is that even people who are nasty most of the time, yeah, sometimes it's a defense mechanism. Yes, it is. And they're not nasty all the time. That there are certain people. That they're very nice to, you know, they have their little group of friends or whatever, or, or different circumstances dictate certain behaviors. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, we need to bring out the nice in everybody. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's born an angel and, and, and we need to bring out the nice in everybody. Their environment changed them to who they are today. 100%. Not to call them a name or anything, but just who they are today. You know, we live in such a dichotomy. Eh? Yeah. Life is, is so weird in that this extreme part of this thing is true over here. And here, look at that. The opposite of this thing is also true over here. Yeah. There's so many dichotomies like that in life. Oh, it's it's a, a yin and yang universe. Right. You know, that there's, there's positives and negatives and everything 
it's powerful, has both positives and negatives, yeah. all those sorts of Before things. Right now, Israel is experiencing her first teacher that doesn't like her. Right? All the other years, she's had school teachers that she's like, but this teacher's a little bit different. And I said, you're going to find that through life. Or yeah. I said, I remember my good teacher, Mr. Hobson, and I remember my bad teacher, Mr. Ricketts. I said, I'm 56, 57. I still remember that person's name. I said, yeah. that's just the way it is. It says you're going to find the, the same thing in life throughout work and friends. You're going to have people you don't like and people that don't like you. So just accept it. After there's school, going to be lots of people that like you. After right? school, if you encounter people that don't like you, um, two things with that is I've learned, you know, I'm, I'm old now, I get to tell you my okay, advice, yeah, yeah, yeah. finally I get to I'm tell sure you people my advice, people. is that, first of all, don't ever assume that somebody doesn't like you, make them really prove it, mm -hmm. you know, assume the best, mm -hmm. uh, ignore the things that might, because you might be misreading people, some people come off like they don't like you and, and, and they really don't have that feeling against you. Uh, so and, and it's just a good idea to not allow them to get away with it anyway. So just imagine that they like you, if you can, and carry on and say hi to them with a big smile on your face and, you know, c kill them with kindness, right? Yeah. Uh, all that kind of stuff. So that, that's number one. Number two, um, assume that they just don't understand you, right? They just don't get you. They don't like you. They just don't yeah, know you. Yeah, yeah. They you know? don't know her, yes. We're all yes. doing the best we yes. can, so you the, know? The example was that yesterday was Valentine's Day. Um, some of the kids were able to give one child a card. But Isabel wasn't able to give everybody a, a, a one child a card or a few people a card. She had to give it to everybody. Right. So she was wondering why the rule was different for her. Right. So she's got one of those teachers. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe the teacher likes her the best. <laughs> I just told her that the and teacher wants, and wants to and wants her to be her very best. Yes. And is going to be hard on her to bring out the best in her. Uh -huh. And that might be going on. Yeah. And if Isabel assumes that that might be going on, yeah. Isabel can counter that by showing her her best. Yes, exactly. You know, yeah. just do that. Like, yeah. be your best. Be the best Isabel that you can be. My friends. And her. whatever happens, happens. And like I say, we're all trying to do our best. Yeah. Things have happened to lots of us that make us not as best as we would have been otherwise. Yeah. Lots of times we don't react in ways and situations that we would like to or that we are happy about, but that's just the way it is because of what happened to us and all these sorts of things. Oh, that's but we're all doing our best. And I think that everybody deserves to be loved. Mm -hmm. And I think that if everybody could really expose that, that part of them that that is that good angel that you were born to be and that you are to that people that are in your circle, that when you're nice, you're nice, and, 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 and you're only not nice because it's justified and that's because of what happened and what they did, da, 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 da. you know what I mean? I think that, that people just don't understand other people if they don't really like them. And maybe somebody's not your cup of tea, that's true. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. I vibrate in certain frequencies that not everybody else doesn't go with their band. You know, they got, they got a different idea of music than I do. It happens, uh, you know, you're not going to please everybody all the time with who you are. But I wouldn't go around assuming that people don't like you. And the third thing of my three points of what to do. Oh, like, no, for, no, there was three. three. Not yet. He's you know, old, he forgot the third part. I didn't forget at all. In fact, I remembered it all the way through while we were talking about what you wanted to talk about because you, you wanted to go after my second one, you know. Yeah. But so number one, assume that they do like you and that they, you're just misreading them and don't even yeah. think about that. Number two, it's just that they don't understand you. And if they did, they'd like you. And then so just be your best, you know, your best self when you're around them. Don't show them your nasty side or your bad side. And that's what happens way too often is that, you know, you think somebody doesn't like you, yeah. so you don't like them either. <laughs> and yeah, so yeah. you give them that little bit of attitude and now they give you that little bit of there. And then, you know, that's what happens so often. It's all misunderstandings. I it's think, all full. I think we have another birthday interruption. I haven't here. got to the third one yet. Oh, good. Well, maybe we can. The third one it. is easy. Is it? Ignore these people. Yes. Walk ignore. away. Yes. Don't go to their their Facebook page and see what they're saying. <laughs> Leave it alone. So anyway. So and, 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 and what? Happy birthday. I already had my birthday. You. Now you get the cake. Happy birthday to you. Two interruptions. Happy birthday, dear Nino. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, there's some writing there. Right, there. Right, right, right. There you go. Oh, you don't have to do that. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe I've made it. Oh, you can't it you, you can't see it now. The way you're holding Happy it. birthday, Neil. Yeah, you're, you're, the way you're holding oh. it, you were live. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was that was Jen. I'm see, sorry. Now we can see the cake, Jen. No, no, no. Put a few of the viewers right yeah, there. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Here, you want to see the live what you just did? You can look over here. <laughs> a little bit of a delay on it. Too. Yeah. See, look. 
So yeah. you can see the cake. See, no problem. With so it. in her blog two days ago, I mean, I wasn't even old at that time. I was still, you know, in that <laughs> first, you know, uh, the, the probation time on being old. Yeah. And she referred to me in her blog as our our old Neil Magnuson. Oh, and, yes, you know, yes, yeah. Yes. I think she even like made the, the words capitalized. <laughs> it looked like it to me anyway. It might have just been that I didn't have my glasses on, but. That's that just jumped out of the page at me. Our old Neil Magnuson is going to be part of the, the march, mm. which was yesterday, which is a whole other thing. Oh, I said, yeah, I love you. He's talking about Jesus. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, but now I told him. I love this. Nice the reason I'm bringing it up is because now he's he got his because ah. because now she's calling me the birthday boy. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, yeah. I always just. I always just want to be a boy. <laughs> I just wanted to be a boy. Okay. And I you, wonder where Pinocchio is these days. He got to be a real boy. Did he? he probably did something. I don't know. Maybe he lives with Geppetto still. Maybe. Eh? He's a real boy somewhere out there. He must be old. Huh. Anyway, I get to make a wish, yes? Yeah, you get to make a wish. And, and you know, you're not supposed to tell people what your wish is. And I'm not no. going to tell you what my no, wish is. No, no, no. Your age, you know, be the place yeah, it would be a fire. My be, hair would be on fire. The, guy, the guy's two blocks over would be running over you know, your hose. These people would see me with my hair on fire, and they go, there he is. He's yeah. a liar after all. Liar, <laughs> liar. Hair's on fire. The Michael Jackson thing. So I think that everybody who's been watching this show for, for whatever length of time, even if you've only caught a couple episodes, everybody who knows me, you guys... I think you know what I'm wishing for. It's what I work for every day. Yep. It's what I'm hoping for. You know. So I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just going to blow the candles out. I hope yeah. I get them all out because, man, I want this wish to come through. For a while. There are no trick candles, are there? No. Well, sure. Well, let's find out. Oh, yeah. I didn't do it. Jen did it, so there might be. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. All right. You got to call up to the old man that he blew them all out. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Neil, Louise. Says. Thank you very much. There you go. Thank you, everybody. Uh, there's, there's a couple hundred people that have written me happy birthday on Facebook, and <laughs> I, I can't thank you all enough. And in fact, I really can't. Yes. I, I tried. Um, I wanted to like every single one of them, and I, I had to go back to the beginning several times because of big fingers and, and slow brain. But uh, Facebook will only allow you to look at two at a time, and then they say see more, and you get two more, and see. see two more two more two more and then like them and then like them and i you know every once in a while i push the wrong button and i go right back i have to go right back to the beginning and now i got to go through all the ones that i liked to find the ones where i ended off with old people yeah technology. oh i'm sure it's problems with old people <laughs> yeah i just started from the bottom yeah. i just pushed see more see more see more and then just started going upwards because they were all listed there so Right. Oh. oh, see, so it's going that way, right? Well, that ruins my whole next, next <laughs> statement. I was going to say it's just old people having trouble with modern technology. Well, this old guy know? figured it out, but I'm not as old as you. No. <laughs> Nobody is. Few people are now. <laughs> and, and I'm feeling it in my bones right back here every that's time a, I move. Oh, my God. Cake, that's a beautiful cake. Yes, yes, that is a wow. beautiful cake. I'm told it's not good course? etiquette nice. to eat. Eat on the uh, on the show. No, but, it's not, but I, they have cooking shows. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So they eat on let's, cooking shows. We need two more. We need two more plates. <laughs> oh no! I got no, no. If I have to get naked to eat this, okay. I got paper plates in my car. If you need them, I'm having the first first taste of the yeah, cake. Yeah, of course. You get the first mm -hmm. cut too. All right. Oh yes. <sighs> Well, I don't know. This might be stuck. There's also a big mess in my car. Yeah, it's for your van. I'm cleaning it. I think it's van. A little bit of my DNA in with the van is going to be fine. Uh, yes, I do still remember doing live the TV here, folks. Yep. Um, I, oh, haven't, I haven't ignored you or forgot you. I'm no. just ignoring you. I'm <laughs> just ignoring you. <laughs> we had the. Uh, <laughs> We've had a number of interesting shows uh, recently where uh, it's been a little less less than formal. We had the uh, the five year anniversary of the CSP. Uh, was that last week? I think that was yeah, last five week. Five years. Yeah. We had uh, Jen's birthday the week before that. Um, yeah. And so the week before that was my birthday. I'm just, I'm just uh, this is a test. I have to do this for the uh, senility folks every once in a while. And, uh, you know, like yourself. <laughs> see if I'm going uh, into dementia or not. Um, James, take one. On that note, you know, I, I got. I want to tell you people something because yeah. I know you care. You you are calm, passionate people, and uh, my mom. Uh, I, I've told you a couple times that uh, you know she's 
She doesn't have much memory, but she's got a good disposition and that's uh, served her very well. She will be 89 years old tomorrow. And yesterday she had what is absolutely her worst day. She's been for the last couple of weeks off and on been having some interesting manic uh, type hallucinations. And um, she's, she has very little memory. She has had for the last couple of years. She won't remember that I visited her 10 minutes after I'd left. But um, now she's been asking repeatedly you know, where dad is, who's been gone for 11 years and, and many other people that, she, you know, she was there when they left. And so yeah, last night she was extremely distraught about it. She couldn't quite get over it. And uh, I just want you to say a little prayer for my mom and uh, keep her in your thoughts. Uh, she's going to go through some pretty nasty times by the looks of it for the next little bit of a time here. She won't be able to stay in her own room by herself anymore. She was out wandering the halls last night, knocking on people's doors and thinking that my dad was hiding in a closet. And so you know this is these are the end stages of uh, of life for for many people uh she's very fortunate to have gotten to that point and so am i lucky to have had her for so long she was a great mom is a great mom just uh, not herself anymore and uh i, I wanted to say something because tomorrow's her birthday and it looks like uh, now our our fun times of being very fortunate and having our mom still with us uh, have turned to uh, managing somebody who's uh, suffering from extreme dementia and not coping at all with their situation so yeah, yeah. How they find a way to uh, fix that? Please. There may be a medication of some sort. Yeah, yeah they um, really do. I'm going to suggest lion's mane mushrooms uh, in a tea for her. Uh, probably uh, advanced beyond, and you know, much good for that. But uh, yeah, anyway, I didn't want to. Be yeah, no problem. We, we would have lots of positive uh, energy. My mom and I were thoughts. my mom and I were born a day apart from each other. Yeah. I was amazed and, to uh, know that. And both, you know, the day after, the next day after Valentine's Day. So. Yeah. Uh, it's been a, a wonderful, wonderful run of birthdays and Valentine's uh, with my mom. Look what I had for my birthday. My I son. A couple of <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Right? I feel like I'm missing something. I don't know what that would be. You got the cake lifter right there. Okay, there it is. So you do this the is cutting. confusing me. This thing. Uh, right it's here. not needed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just confusing me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old now. Leave me alone. Where's the goddamn center of this uh, thing? Okay. Give him a magnifying glass. <laughs> I, I hope you people have enjoyed the show as much as I've enjoyed doing it over the, this last uh, two and a half years. I'll say. Uh, I thank you, everybody who's been a, a faithful watcher of the show. I have several of you contact me on occasion and. Uh, let me know that you like it, and I appreciate that a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if we can keep it going for a while. Uh, I'm, out, I'm out to achieve low barrier access with uh, cannabis being available to people that don't have a lot of money in ways that are still really good for them, because I think that uh, we as a society can really make that happen for people. <laughs> it's not hard. And uh, that was Jen's finger. <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't be in charge of this right now, even though I have, Why not? I, have six, birthday, I have 65 years experience, except I've never really cut a cake like this before. <laughs> no, eh? I would have said doom, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, there's, there's. But you start doing something weird with it, so. What do you mean weird? Well, we, some old people do weird things. <laughs> <laughs> and then they don't even know it's weird anymore. <laughs> I know. Yeah, apparently. So you don't, you don't argue with them because they're older you know, and wiser than you are, it right? It was first this thing that was confusing me, and now it's uh, the, the strawberries that are on these individual pieces. I got to, <laughs> I got to try to cut right through all this stuff. Yeah. Or, it's not easy. Or, oh, no. You know, just move it over. Well, just move, move it over, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mine seems to be not there. Yeah, yeah, dude. Although I should give a being idiot just watching you try to fucking deal with yeah, it. Yeah, I want, I want the, uh, one of the best I want the thing. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's watch Neil make a fool out of himself. <laughs> he finally old enough. A year makes. <laughs> finally old enough we can make fun of him. <laughs> finally. He was younger yesterday. He's older today. <laughs> I successfully cut a piece here. Nice. Is it yeah. big? Is it tiny? Oh, he did it. It's a ah, I have been fairly capable most of my yeah. life for most things. Can I, can I cut more? Sure. I'll have a piece. All Just about right. that piece right there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I feel I have to cut it like a pizza. There you go. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, can you cut a fucking pizza? Into eight pieces. Oh, eight pieces. Have to be each of the little tiny quarters on it, like instead of. No, just half, just half, I want it, you half. know. Half. <laughs> yeah, well, sure, you would do like cut it in half. Whoa. <laughs> oh, okay. Carefully, we'll try to escape. This apparently. is what happens when Neil's like. Yeah, I'm giving this up. I've, I've I've proven that I can't be trusted. <laughs> At least I'm telling the truth. Yeah. 
I try to do that. Mm. Oh, good. Are we eating this on? on... Why not? I don't. I'm so sorry for you people over there that talk. don't have cake. I have to listen. <laughs> I, can <eat. laughs> I can probably eat and talk at the same time. Yeah, your brother, like you said, there. Surprise, surprise. You're not that old, but you should not be able to multitask anymore. Mm. Wow. <laughs> More these cake. Pretty good cake. The, so far, it's delicious. <laughs> I'm going to have a bite. Yeah. Right and uh, for, for those of you that are out there saying, have a bite of your cake, Neil, and, and uh, I'm going to have a bite. And for all those who are saying, hey, this is supposed to be like an educational show here. We don't need to watch you eat. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about that, but, but a little tolerance. The addiction to sugar over those places. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, eh? <laughs> totally. Totally. This has been going on for 65 years. <laughs> yeah. What? At, at this date, on the February 15th? <laughs> Me and this right here, mm. lacking a bit of ice cream. Mm. <laughs> Who out there does not have a picture of themselves at one years of age, at your first birthday party, uh -huh. with a bunch of cake and ice cream all over your face? Mm -hmm. They start us out young. And the baby formulas are high in sugar, higher than they should be. That cake and ice cream that that one-year-old is, is stuffing into their mouth, should not be happening. No. Every holiday after that becomes about sugar. Sugar is the number one driving force behind all of these holidays. Everything. From Christmas to Easter to birthdays, and of course the big one, which is Halloween. Think about how ridiculous this is. On Halloween, we dress our kids up in scary costumes, we have them join together in gangs of other kids in scary costumes. We send them door to door to demand loudly that they either get their fix, I mean treat, <laughs> or they're gonna play some sort of a trick which won't be nice. And over the years, there's been pumpkins set on fire, garbage and shit thrown on doorsteps, all kinds of different bad things done to people who would not supply the fix, I mean treats. <laughs> it's crazy that we allow that to happen. But that's what we do. And our kids come back with bags full of all of these sugar treats that enrich these sugar dealing corporations immensely. They make so much money off of all of these holidays because sugar is at the center of all of it. We are mostly all of us sugar addicts. I know I'm talking to a number of people out there in the audience that have uh, beat that addiction. Uh, some of you that had to because of uh, cancers and other things that uh, sugars feed on or or the cancer feeds on sugar, sorry. But it is a real problem in our society for sure. Uh, type two diabetes uh, is, is such a huge problem. And in fact, in my lifetime, I watched as the world's biggest issue was starvation and it shifted to obesity. Sugar is a real issue. Anyway, you know what I used to do? Um, when I had a house and uh, kids would come trick or treating, I haven't had that for a while. Yeah. I took it upon myself to do my my adult duty. Mm -hmm. I tried to scare the kids as best I could. <laughs> I did that. So I'd say, hey, you kids ever hear of type two diabetes? You know this stuff causes it, right? You're gonna lose your teeth, you're probably gonna go blind, you might have your arms and legs fall off, you certainly won't be able to have sex. Anyway, that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I totally did that. So I, I found out why Chang's Tank Warden was calling. Oh yeah. They had a flood. Oh dear. Cops are closed today. Oh. I let her mother know, but being that I can't text or call because we're using our phone, I hope that she sees the message because it's supposed to be cops. Is it a long drive? No, it's not too bad. <laughs> Matt, Matt's green admission is not too bad. A little disappointment, but you got to learn to put up with a little yeah. disappointment. I let her know that I could. Like with your government. <laughs> not so disappointing with our government. With policing. Lately. You know, lies. It's a medical profession. Cost and lies. Yeah. A little disappointment. Just a little disappointment mm -hmm. uh, just a little disappointed in uh, in our government here in british columbia john horgan and uh, and uh, mike farnworth these pieces of shit put together a cannabis and seizure unit yeah. they call it a csu you know cannabis seizure unit i'm not even going to tell you what they call themselves because it's just ridiculous they don't deserve to ever have those words uttered in the same sentence talking about them they bring such mayhem and destruction to our communities and to the people that have been trying to, to do the right thing in a world where people are sick and suffering 
unable to cope with pharmaceutical medications, needing cannabis, because that is the natural medicine that we've used for millennia that our body's used to, that, that does what it needs to do to help us with the different situations that we have. And we live in a world that's so corrupt that this most important of natural medicines was prohibited by a bunch of gangsters back in the day who had control of the media and lied through their teeth about cannabis, calling it marijuana, saying that it made people completely insane and violent. And they convinced the masses of that through media and, and their leverage of different doctors and professionals that would uh, be blackmailed. Essentially, that's what it was all about, either, either bribed or blackmailed. And so we have this situation now well over 100 years later. In fact, next year is going to be the anniversary in Canada of the criminalization of people to do with cannabis. In 1923, a minister in the, in the uh, federal uh, parliament stood up, Mr. Belland. It was in January of 1923, a liberal backbencher. And Mr. Belland said that today we have a new item in the schedule. And he sat down. And that was it. They didn't announce publicly what it was. They wrote down that it was cannabis. Um, there was no debate about it in any way, shape, or form. Those that voted knew what they were voting about because there had just been recent articles by an extremely corrupt Canadian female judge named Emily Murphy, who on behalf of her pharmaceutical buddies and, uh, and her other rich elite bastard buddies, wrote a book about the illegal drug trade you know, drugs that had been made illegal by public servants because they weren't uh, good for you and they wouldn't make profit for the people that wanted to sell you alcohol and other things like that and might open people's minds up and all the other reasons why the elite decided that they had the ability to impose on the masses of people what drugs they could and could not do. Well, she wrote a book to support all of that called The Black Candle. And one of the chapters in there was on marijuana. The title was The New Menace. And that was uh, an excerpt to that uh, was put into Maclean's magazine and ran in Canada uh, back in June of 1922. And the following year, in January of 1923, the Right Honourable, or not so much Mr. Bellin for the Liberal Party, said what he said about we have a new drug in the schedule, and that was the start of criminalization of cannabis in Canada. A very ominous uh, anniversary coming yeah. up here. So next year, if we're still at this, we get to say that all year. It's been a hundred years of uh, hundred years of bullshit. Yeah, bullshit, yeah. yeah hundred years of bullshit of Canadian governments not doing their due due diligence purposely to support illegal <laughs> criminal. Oh man, I you know my auntie Barbie's probably watching this, but you know I feel very strongly about those people and what they've done. Uh, this hundred years of prohibition in Canada of the cannabis plant has caused so much so much harm harm I, I mean i can't put it into words i wish i could yeah i wish i could eloquently find a way to describe just how horrible and wrong this has all been you know we grew up with it marijuana was a, a dangerous illegal drug it was it was right for the police to uh, you know uh, enforce these laws against people because because democracy <laughs> because drug addiction because you know, look at these people over here, what they're doing with these drugs and what happened to them. Oh, my God. So for all those good reasons, it, you know, I grew up confused a little bit about the right and wrong, about drug prohibition, about cannabis use, about people that would decide to use drugs for whatever reason. We were, I was brought up but with Christian parents, taught that, uh, you know, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. And as far as I was taught as a child, that meant not just the money that he felt you should pay in taxes, but in your service to Caesar, in your obedience to those laws that Caesar would impose on us. And that's not what I should have been taught at all. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but we need to teach our kids that they need to be very skeptical about governments and corporations and rich people in general and rules and all of those sorts of things. We need to have a new generation of smart, wide awake kids that understand where the enemies lie and, and what, what you can read between lines in, in what's given to you and who's giving it to you. And I hope we get a bunch of researchers out. I hope that we get a bunch of kids that pull out their, their duck, duck, go and check right away to see whether or not that's true or not. 
And I hope we get a world where we're allowed to be told the truth and where censorship allows for, for all things to be told so that yeah. people can see the lies and hear the lies and make up their own minds about things, but at least have them there so that they're not hidden away and underground and, and festering the way things do. Like then we're going to get that smarter generation because we have the access to the internet instead of encyclopedias now. So our younger generation has an access to more information than would that you hundred percent, right? Hundred so percent. It would be logical to think that there are going to be some smarter kids coming along the way. Oh, I hundred percent think so. Yes, and I, they will I'm see just, what governments have done because it's not closed off I, about what other governments are doing in other countries because it's right there on their screen. Yeah, and I, right? and, I, so and I don't mean to be pessimistic, and I'm not, yeah, and, yeah. I, and I'm just kind of taking the devil's advocate a little bit because you know we need to be aware of these things and concerned to some degree. I'm an optimist uh, myself. I think that love will rule the world one day and the fear will be set aside. Uh, only reasonable fears will be uh, present. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, know, yeah. I'm an idealist, yeah. I'm an optimist. I like to, I like to believe in, in positive outcomes, but um, uh, it does, it's very worrying. Uh, having said all that, it's still very worrying uh, the direction that we're going. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the abilities are of the powers that be to shut off the internet. Oh, they they can do it. They've, they've done. The, I the, could do it. Yeah, Iranians they, don't get the, the Chinese don't get the same internet. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's. Uh, I, I know that uh, I've heard that uh, you know they can just decide this or that is is not okay. They yep. can they oh, can yeah. cancel websites. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the the buyers club and something that just happened there as well. Okay. So anyway, I don't know. I mean, I, so so I don't know. So so say in China they got a billion people, and the government has shut off uh, access to the regular world's internet. They have their own little internet going on. Does that not mean? Does that mean that people can't have a satellite dish and download and and get that information from those? I mean, is it completely blocked out? I don't know. I don't. Oh. Know. So I, and I and I think that I like to think that if they did shut it off, we would find another way. Yeah. That you know those of us that are in favor of freedom and have technical. Um, skills which i don't <laughs> but those that do well, we continue we, to find ways for people to communicate ham radio through through frequencies and through yeah. you know these types of things so that's how we use i'm fairly we confident code, right so talk about not being able to trust governments <laughs> and governments being out of control the cannabis buyers club in victoria is one of the oldest dispensaries in canada operated by ted smith since the early days they have been raided in the past and that's resulted in constitutional challenges that they have won. We are allowed to grow cannabis in, in large part because of Ted Smith's efforts and the Allard case. I think he had some input in that. But what he had to, for sure, who huge influence in was the ability for us to use concentrates and to extract cannabinoids off of the plant. Can you imagine how ludicrous that is that your public servant thinks that the actual medicine, the, the active ingredient found in these beautiful resin glands on the cannabis plant can't be like taken off of the cannabis plant, put together in a little pile and used without having to consume the plant matter with it, like seriously. But we had to go to court for that. And that Smith, uh, that, that case uh, came right out of what Ted Smith had been working on in, uh, in Victoria there when it was one of his bakers that was arrested and ended up uh, going to court over all of this. And, and Ted has been fighting for the right of medical patients to access cannabis for 20 plus years, 26 years. I don't know how many it is, but it's a lot. Uh, numerous protests. Uh, he's been part of um, uh, educating people about cannabis through uh, university classes that he was directly resulting or the result of uh, with Hempology 101. He wrote a great book about all of this and fighting the good fight for a long time. Over these last number of years, Ted has been vindicated over and over again. Uh, by different studies that come out, different realizations that we have, and different moves that the government has made. In fact, legalization, for one, you would think vindicates Ted's efforts, even though it's not the legalization that uh, we want. They still legalized people's ability to go and get cannabis, which Ted had been helping people get for all these years when that wasn't legal, but it was certainly wrong and immoral that it wasn't legal. Ted was one of the pioneers and, uh, and people that have, have, have laid the path down for getting access to cannabis in a world where the governments have been trying hard to prevent that for a long time, and they have failed, failed miserably. And now the science that's come out, like I say, has vindicated Ted over and over again. Ted has been fined personally 
$3.25 million. And the club itself, which is a, a, an independent society, has been fined another $3.25 million by these scumbag, power drunk, cannabis seizure unit assholes that somehow think that there's some justification in that. Hmm. You know, we don't, we don't fine millions of dollars, people that rape and murder kids. Yeah. Clifford Olson, he wasn't fined millions of dollars. Yeah, he was given a prison sentence because that's what the other side does is prison sentences. The prison sentences come if you don't pay the fine. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, oh, well, you just got a fine and, and that's that and you're not going to pay it and that's that and there's no repercussions. Oh, no. You can just imagine that when Ted says, screw you, you don't deserve a penny. I deserve a medal. And they're going to put him in jail for that. You can just bet that's going to happen. That'll break my heart. All of it breaks my heart. $6.5 million to a cannabis club that has had no victims and hundreds and thousands of satisfied medical patients who will swear that cannabis, because of Ted, saved their life. This is, absurd is not a word you can use because it's so much more than absurd. Criminal even doesn't begin to touch what this is. Murdering and raping children might deserve a huge fine. Putting a huge fine onto people who have saved people's lives and helped people get access to the natural plant medicine that was unjustly being prohibited for 20 some years at great risk to himself and with great sacrifice all the way through. I don't even, I, I don't know what word describes that. That is such a heinous crime. I don't think $6.5 million fine on the CSU would begin to cover what they should have to pay for the sins and the crimes that they're committing against us as human beings here. This is a direct attack on sick people, mm -hmm. on disabled people. This is one of the most heinous crimes I can imagine. Not only is there no justification for imposing any fine on a hero of the community supported by his municipality and their government, supported by the local police, supported by the thousands of patients that he's helped over the years, supported by the millions of activists that are familiar with his work and what he's been doing, all of them good people. This, this is one of the most horrendous acts of heinous violence that I could ever conceive. To put such a fine onto such fine people, I imagine they're shaking in their boots, even though they're defiant, trying to laugh it off and say, oh, well, we're just not going to pay that. we got a strategy. We're going to take them to court. We're going to sue them. We're not paying this. I'll bet you they're still shaking in their boots. I bet you I would be. I bet you you would be. $6.5 million fine hanging over your head. Obvious jail time involved if you can't pay it. And of course you can't pay it. How could you possibly pay it? You weren't raping these, these rich people for their, or these sick people for their money, which they didn't even have. Ted didn't make a fortune on anything ever. I know Ted. Wears the same old sweater all the time you see him. Doesn't drive a flashy car. Doesn't live high on the hog. Doesn't have money to burn anywhere because he puts it back into the club. And, I'm horrified. And yesterday they shut down their website. And that's what brought me to, to, to think about, you know, what's yeah. going on here is now they decide they should shut down his website. Yep. Okay. Cancel him. Yep. Make it so he can't communicate with people. They'll probably cancel him off of Facebook pretty soon too. We need to stand behind Ted. We do. We need to, to get some trucks. And Doug and Michelle. But Doug and Michelle are taking them. Well, of course, Doug and Michelle. We yeah. talked about that last week yeah. as well. They're taking them to court too. Similar. Uh, Don and Carol from Weeds uh, recently had to pay $160,000 times three to the CSU. They had a limited time to, to make that payment. And if they didn't pay it, then they were in real trouble. Then it was going to triple or whatever it was they were going to do. They, they think they have all the power in the world to say, whatever, little fly, I got a great big, huge tractor truck here, and I'm going to drive right over your head. They have no business on that tractor trailer. They have no business being anything but subservient to the fly. I'm appalled. I am so disgusted. I am. I, I don't know what to do. I wish there was a million of me. I wish I could take time from what I'm doing here to go over there and support those people in person every every day of every week here as we go forward. 
I wish I had a great big truck that I could go and park right in the, in the driveway of, of Mr. Horgan and say, you're not leaving, Mr. Horgan. I'm not going to let you leave. I'll provide you with food because I'm not, I'm, I'm not horrible. But you don't get to leave until you make this right. I think it's on Trudeau's watch too, even though my, my great friend, John Conroy, who's been such a blessing to what, what we're doing here and the work that we're doing here with the CSP, says that it's not Trudeau's fault, it's Horgan's fault. It's, a, it's the BC government that's put this unit together that thinks they have such power to intimidate people. Yeah. But I think it's on Trudeau's watch too. He didn't legalize the way he should have. He legalized the opposite the way he should have. Put the, put the community and our, yeah. our whole industry into the hands of a bunch of greedy pharmaceutical corporatist Bastards? What did the hell? Bill Blair create the CSU? I thought he did that before he left. Bill Blair it, is an Ontario police chief that yeah, uh, was put in charge, in charge of, uh, of, of the Cannabis Act yes. and lots of different things. He may have had a, a, a personal hand in the I CSU. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. at all. Yeah. Bill, you should know better by now. You've heard enough from, uh, oh, from yeah. our side. But uh, He's our yeah. international person now or something, Internet, or emergency affairs or something guy now. It's terribly disgusting, all oh, of it. It is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It is. And yeah, we should maybe go and do a show from Ted's place. Uh, we can get leave in the morning and be there for a Tuesday. We, we Ryan, can... you know I don't leave my my post here unless I have to. I'm yes. hoping I'm hoping that by July I'm going to feel comfortable enough to go for a trip with you. Okay. Um, but maybe we could do it on a Monday then. When if you're Monday not... is yeah, belongs to my mum and will yeah. always belong to my mum. All right. But you know I also get a lot of other stuff done on Mondays as I'm going to see her back and forth. Um, and, and it turns out that, uh, you know, when you're running a business and you're an activist full time mm -hmm. and you're working six days a week and my, my days are 10 hours long, easy and more than that, although I don't, I'm not, I don't work very hard. I'm not, uh, I'm not swinging a hammer like I used to at all, mm -hmm. but my brain is working hard all the time and I'm on it and I don't get a lot of time. I, I do what I can to make sure that we have what we have to have here. Yeah. So I'm always on it. And on Mondays, it seems my day off is busier than my, yeah. my my working days it was a long day yesterday a, a very long tough day yesterday in many ways wow. uh, with my mom and her condition yeah um we didn't talk at all yet about what happened here in vancouver um i don't want to spend too oh, much like, time talking about I, it i have mixed yeah. emotions about yeah. it yeah but uh, i went on the, uh, the the march for missing and murdered indigenous women that have been going on uh, for 26 years here in vancouver uh, every valentine's day they meet at maine and hastings and we march and we march uh, in support of each other and in support of uh, some action to be taken to address the horrendous horrendous uh, thing that's been going on for all these years of primarily indigenous women and girls disappearing and being murdered and found you know raped the the uh, it's so horrific for the families involved and my heart goes out to all of them and I, I certainly go there every time I can to support them. I've been on most of the marches. Uh, yesterday was a larger march than I've ever seen. There was uh, so many people there. Um, so much uh, truth was spoken from the microphone about uh, you know, what it feels like to be a family of a lost one and uh, other things. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy here in Vancouver about uh, some of the symbols around this this city and about some of the past. You know, we've been canceling the past here in this world for a while, and I'm not in favor of that. I don't think canceling the past is the right way to go. And I don't know if Gassy Jack was canceled yesterday or not. I hope not. I hope that he can be a reminder to us of things in the past that we want to do differently now. And that he won't just be forgotten, that he can continue to be used as an educational tool. And I do mean tool, because if you understand the history of Gassy Jack, he, you know, by today's standards, wasn't a, a good human being. I'm not sure who in the past, by today's standards, were good human beings. I don't think there were many. But uh, Gassy Jack certainly was not a good human being in, in his misogynist uh, act practices and things that he did and what have you and he's been a, a bone of contention amongst the indigenous people for a long time here in vancouver and i've heard that it stated many times uh, it built to quite a head about a year ago uh, there was talk of the city taking that statue down there's a big statue of gassy jack that stands prominently in the middle of gastown i used to use it when i did the drug war history walking tours as a way to talk about the the alcohol purveyors of the early days, the early drug dealers in Vancouver, and Gassy Jack was that 
exact person. And other things we talked about with Jack Gassy Jack as well. In any case, uh, the march took a different route this year and they went through Gastown. And as I suspected, when they got to Gassy Jack, there was a big fuss being made. But they had plans beyond just making a fuss. They uh, covered him in red paint to symbolize the blood that was on his hands and being. And they lassoed him around the neck and they pulled him down. And they beat the living tar out of him. They tore off his head and his arm and everything they could think of to discredit this person from the past. So I hope that there's still some reminder in for future indigenous generations, as well as uh, Caucasian generations and all the different colors of people, if color matters at all, and I really don't think it should, of past crimes committed against people and children and people of color and all the rest of that. I hope that we as a society learn from all of that, that we don't just cancel it all, rewrite it all, decide that colored people played roles where white people played roles, to that, that white people played roles where colored people played roles, and, and different gendered people played roles where different gendered people played roles. I hope that we don't skew history so badly that future generations will have no ability to learn the lessons of the past because it won't even be told anywhere. And we can maybe have all of these horrible things repeated again because of it. Who knows? But I'm not a big fan of canceling history. I'm a pretty big fan of telling the truth and learning from things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I hope that they would leave that statue there so that every year they could march past it and say their piece and get it off their chests. And once again, year after year, make a ceremony out of talking about what wasn't right about what happened there. But it, what's done is done and what will be will be. And I have little ability to affect any of it. Uh, that's how it is, and I've come to understand and accept that. I have my little show here, and I do what I can do to support different groups in, in many ways. But what will be will be, and we're living in a world as mostly observers here, not to say that you can't make a difference. I absolutely believe one person can, and a whole bunch of people really can. But there's only those things we can change and those things we can't change, and much of what we can't change uh, you know, is going to happen with or without us. And uh, we're here to do the best of it, make the best of it as we can. So um, what should we do now? We should probably do a little oversight as to the CSP. For just a brief moment, Glenn, why don't we talk a bit about canamatch.ca? I, sure. I want to I give oh, you yeah. some time because uh, <laughs> I, I believe in canamatch.ca as a wonderful way to connect our community. And our community has been much divided in the, in the last couple of years here, mostly with legalization, partly to do with COVID. But for people to connect with each other is an extremely important thing. And to have a way to do that, uh, you know, that's easy, convenient, um, is really, really awesome. So Len cr created this, this thing, canamatch.ca, which is pretty much what it sounds like. Yep. Uh, if you're in the Canna community and you want to match up with somebody, well, canamatch.ca. Uh, it doesn't have to be for romantic purposes, although, you know, be for love purposes. makes the world go round. And, purposes. <laughs> you know, there, no, no good reason why you couldn't either, right? Of course, yeah. and, and that may have been the, what was the impetus? Was it some love go, go great yeah, we, together? Yeah, <laughs> you know? it does. Yeah. So, so, but it's more than that. It's much, much more than yeah. that. It, you know, it's about friendship. It's it, about finding other people in communities that, that are like-minded. And then yeah. this is a valuable and important thing to be able to do. And now you have an app. Yep, we have the app, and also uh, for the next three months, we're in the High Canada Magazine, nice uh, full page ads. Nice. So we're getting out there to get more people on the uh, onto the site. So we're at right. four thousand two hundred and something. I think it's four thousand two hundred sixty-five. Is there a there. Facebook page? There's a Facebook page. So you guys can go and like and share the there's Facebook page. Yeah, there's a new. We've got some new pictures on there with Canada Match, and it's saying that like like-minded people meet like-minded people. Nice. Um, if you're in a place that you don't know where to get cannabis reach out to candy match if you're a couple and you're traveling and you want to meet another couple who is kind of friendly uh to see where to get meds or you know be able to eat in that in their town or something that's another thing we have a couple of sections for just for that too so where yeah. everybody's all included because we would say oh uh, you know join kind of well, i have a girlfriend or i have a boyfriend so we did the couples thing as making it so now if you go to san francisco you can reach out and meet another couple and maybe possibly make friends yeah right and now you've made new friends and when they come to vancouver people can reach out to you on the other side and say show us your town 
and maybe even have a foursome. <laughs> no. You know what that is, eh? yeah, yeah. That, That's when the one couple says to the other couple, hey, you want to fool around? They say no, so then they force them. Oh, so they force them. <laughs> See, now, you <laughs> happen to hit a soft spot because Canamax will not, I mean, Facebook will not let me advertise because of that. What? They, they think there might be a foursome. Oh, they, my yes, God. Yes, and yes, and not, my, swapping, not, not, not the foursome swapping, I described. Yeah, it's swapping, right? Oh, uh, Facebook. Yeah, so, Facebook, uh, get out of the bedrooms sections, with yeah. people. So I cannot advertise on there because we have oh, a couples section. If I was to take away the couples man. section, no problem. No problem, well, Willie. Yeah, maybe there's language you can change or something in there. <laughs> one, of our, one of our regular viewers, uh, Maria there, she, she's been prompting me to change our language. She said, maybe if I use marijuana instead of cannabis, we can get better results. Oh, no, no. I think there's a time and place for marijuana. There's, there's, and it's not usually when you're talking about cannabis. But, uh, you know, I don't, uh, I'm not afraid of that name. I know it was made up to discredit cannabis and to confuse people about, uh, you know, what it was because there was cannabis uh, medicine on the shelves uh, at the time when they prohibited marijuana. But they decided to call it this marijuana, which nobody knew what well, that was. It's not a marijuana plant. It's a cannabis plant. It's a cannabis course, plant. Of course, it's cannabis. But whatever works, right? I mean, for shock value, sometimes you say marijuana. If you want to, you, want, you know, it depends who you're communicating with. I'm not afraid to use it. I, I know some people don't like it being used ever at all yeah. because it was a, uh, like a like colonization. Colon, uh, cool. Colonization. <laughs> colonization. <laughs> Hard to say after a few dabs. No. <laughs> I haven't had any dabs. I have. <laughs> Probably a contact high from your dabs or something like that. I don't know. But uh, yeah. So anyway. Yes. Well, I think it's important it's because we, we've had we've had such division in our community. Like I say, because of COVID, but also because of legalization. Uh, there's really people that have gone to uh, opposite sides. I, I hate that there are even sides here yeah. on, on either of it. Do we need to have a bringing together of people where we all understand that you know? You have a different opinion than me, and that's okay. And mm -hmm. and I respect your opinion because you you know you have different ways of figuring shit out. And and I might be right, I might be wrong. You might be right, you might be wrong. We need to just love each other. Yeah. That's all. Everybody's doing the best they can. There's been a mass hypnosis event happen where the the powers that be understand how to scare people into stopping their critical thinking. We need to start using our critical thinking. We need to take a deep breath, realize that everybody's doing the best they can. Some people might have misinformation. You might have misinformation. We all could be wrong. Who knows? I don't know. But I do know that hating each other is, is, is not the right way to go. It feeds right into the agenda of those that, that want to man manipulate, manipulate and exploit us. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah. So, Cannabis Substitution Program yes. turned five years old last, last week. week. Last week. So, we're into our sixth year of demonstrating because this is a demonstration i started demonstrating five years plus ago now that cannabis high dose edibles can get people through the withdrawal from opioids and other hard street drugs including alcohol and that cannabis high dose edibles can replace the use of those substances that was a demonstration that needed to happen because the overdose crisis had hit and i knew I had already had the experience that told me that this had been, this is the case. So we started giving out cannabis high dose edibles, thanks to weeds, glass and gifts, the medicinal cannabis dispensary, um, green wilderness, twisted extracts, Joe pepper, and a few others that became constant donators that allowed me and the group of volunteers that pretty quickly assembled once we started doing it to hand out high dose edibles to people that would line up to get it to use to accomplish what I said there, but we didn't screen anybody to say, are you going to use this to get through withdrawal? And are you using these other hard drugs? We never asked anybody those questions. They all knew what it was about. We put up big signs saying what it was all about. People understood the spirit of why we were there and what we were doing, and they, they would line up for usually two to three hours ahead of time to get their little care pack of four to six edibles and a couple of joints to help them in their lives. We have been demonstrating the effectiveness of that and the safety of that for now over five years on the downtown east side. We have fully documented what we did. 
through pictures and videos and number keeping, we documented what we've done. We never tried to hide what we were doing. Started before we started handing stuff out, I went to city council and explained to them what we were going to do after I got approval from Van Du, the Vancouver Area Network of Drug Users, to use their premises to do this. I went to the Vancouver Police Board with Rob Laurie, the lawyer, and we presented to them, this is what we're doing. We're gonna meet at Van Du. We're gonna give out a bunch of high dose edibles of cannabis. And we just wanted to tell you. <laughs> Uh, Deputy Chief Steve Ray came and shook my hand afterwards. We had a nice conversation. They couldn't give us any public verbal support, but they've left us completely alone and allowed us to do what we're doing here. And Deputy Chief Ray has advocated on our behalf at high levels within the VPD and beyond. So we're completely above board. We're an open book. We've had a successful demonstration for five years that cannabis high dose edibles works for many people. We have in, during that time, a very conservative estimate of 5 million milligrams of high dose cannabis edibles have been given out during that time. In doses from five milligrams at the low end, but mostly up, well, up to 500 milligrams per dose. We have uh, these right here. These are new chocolates that I just commissioned to have made. Uh, this package contains two of those chocolates and each one of those have 250 milligrams. They are quite powerful. Most of the people we're dealing with require quite powerful high dose edibles. They were after all hard drug users shooting heroin and fentanyl into their bloodstreams prior to replacing that with cannabis. 10, 15, 20, 30 milligrams is seldom enough to offset the use of such powerful narcotics that these people had been involved in before. Not to mention that the drivers of that type of drug use are usually severe physical pain or emotional pain. People are suffering harshly when they start taking those narcotics. They get some relief from those narcotics. There's no question that opioids are good painkillers. They're not good to be taken long term. They continue to build up internal neural networks that need to be refilled and expanded each time, meaning you need to you build a tolerance and you need to use more and more as you go, and its effectiveness becomes less and less over time. Uh, they are great for having your leg amputated or some short-term, seriously painful event. They're not good for long-term chronic pain. But that's what the doctors prescribe for people and have for, for years on behalf of pharmaceutical companies. But we have high dose edibles for people. And we've been demonstrating for all these years, not just the effectiveness, because that's important that it work, but the safety, because it's the government who says we can't do this because of the dangers involved. That high dose edibles probably are dangerous, they say. Probably dangerous for kids. Probably dangerous for pregnant women. Might even cause Birth defects is what they said recently in a court case. Health Canada had the gall to say that high dose cannabis edibles could possibly have similar effects to that of thalidomide because they haven't done enough research to know that it doesn't. What a crock of shit that is. Sorry, Annie Barbie, but this stuff is serious. There's plenty of research, plenty of anecdotal evidence, plenty, 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 plenty of that. Anecdotal evidence is still evidence. It's real lived experience evidence. But there's tons of evidence for a long, long time about the safety of cannabis, even in the form of high dose edibles. And we have been proving it for all of these years. And yet it was just last week that a lawyer on behalf of Health Canada got up before a judge under oath, and some oath, I'm sure they take some oath, probably to the queen but had the gall to make that assertion that they're worried that there could be long-term health consequences similar to that of thalidomide with people using high-dose cannabis edibles. It's disgusting. I've been proving it for over five years with the CSP that nothing like that happens. 
The world has been proving that for decades and decades in Jamaica and Canada with the, the use of cannabis and, in, in the, and the use of high dose edibles, not so much in Jamaica, but here in North America, high dose edibles are not new. Uh, in fact, uh, I was eating strong edibles back when I was a teenager, which is a little bit of a time ago now. So anyway, the CSP decided to have that demonstration, to call itself the Cannabis Substitution Program. It took on a life of its own. It attracted a, a real good group of about 15 volunteers. And for three and a half years, it operated with the cooperation from Van Du and out of their office uh, on Hastings Street, close to Maine. During that time, the city of Vancouver passed a motion after two and a half years, finally, they ignored me for the first uh, presentation to them and for the year afterwards. But after two and a half years, they did pass a motion because of the demonstration that we had been putting on and the success of that demonstration, that they would support what we were doing in the form of low barrier access to cannabis, which means being able to get cannabis as easily as possible to people that, uh, that need it, that are struggling with barriers. That being done, having had a good meeting with the city, deciding that we would find a storefront and provide low barrier access, we'd provide low cost as well as no cost cannabis. We did that, we found a storefront, this wonderful building that we're in right now broadcasting from was a store. Now it's just a place where we do the show from. The store is out on the sidewalk in an RV because even though the city said they would support low barrier access and they knew we were gonna find ourselves a store and they said that they were gonna come and support what we were doing if they thought it was being done the right way. Instead, the licensing department, not even aware of this motion or any of those conversations, decided that we had to have a license before they would uh, allow us to stay in the store. And no matter what the city council passed, it didn't matter. They were following Canada's rules on cannabis and we had to have that license. So we applied for one quickly, amazingly. John Conroy is an amazing lawyer. Never charged us a penny. Worked months and months, night and day, putting together an amazing application to Health Canada. Extremely comprehensive application, it includes an hour and a half of video clips of testimonials from the people that we've been helping here. It included several dozen links to peer reviewed studies showing the effectiveness of what we're doing here. Compelling to say the least. Simple to understand, in my opinion. We sent that to Health Canada. We sent it along with a, another application to the health ministry of the federal health ministry for an emergency temporary exemption from the Cannabis Act, so we didn't have to worry about being arrested here and interfered with by police. Canada's federal health ministry assured us, Patty Haydu's office said that they were, had received our application, that they would do their best to process it in a timely manner. Health Canada said that they had received our application and that uh, we had a, a Zoom meeting with them a few months later where they said they'd have it ready for us in early January. And that wasn't this January. 17 months we've been waiting for Health Canada to provide us licenses to give us protection from interference from authorities with respect to the Cannabis Act, but also to allow us and our society to be able to function as a mainstream business because the banks won't give us a bank account as long as we don't have that license from Health Canada. And without a bank account, our hands are tied quite severely with respect to running a business. This has impeded our ability to help the people we're trying to help greatly. We are very frustrated here about the people that have fallen through the cracks, the people that we're, but we've been unable to reach because we have not had the support of our federal government. It's a horrendous crime. It's murder. People are dying at an alarming rate. We've lost over 2,000 people to this pandemic here in British Columbia alone. Many of those people would have been saved had there been easy access to cannabis high-dose edibles and an education campaign to let the public know that this is a way out. But the governments have not allowed that. The federal government has not allowed that. Thankfully, the provincial government has at least 
written the federal government on our behalf say that they would support us if the feds did the city's just waiting for the feds they all support us except none of it matters we still don't have a temporary exemption from now the new federal health minister or from the new federal ministry of mental health and addictions i've had conversations with them i've written emails to them i've told them lives are at stake here every day is crucial we're losing people still here we are waiting while people die daily in this province half a dozen people die across canada more than that the federal government is murdering these people it doesn't have to be this way there doesn't need to be drug prohibition that drives people to the street and street dealers dealing in drugs that should be sold by professionals caregivers out of stores that's the policy that drove this epidemic of opioid misuse and drug overdose in the first place they're directly responsible for it there's a way out of it we've been demonstrating that for five years and here we sit why because of greed because our government has entered into deals with unethical corporate greedy businessmen about maintaining a strict regulatory scheme for dispensing cannabis to canadians that involves horrendous regulations completely unjustified regulations horrendous packaging limits restrictions fees fines all the rest of it that run a major protection racket at the expense of taxpayers that's costing us millions of dollars to protect an industry that doesn't deserve the huge profits that they will reap if they're successful crimes against humanity are being perpetrated right here right now in canada on many different levels and this is one of them and this is a big one so anyway we'll continue to wait but not wait sitting on our hands we'll continue to provide the services as best we can while we wait and the program continues it's not just here in vancouver where it all started just over five years ago it's been over four years now in victoria where one of the board members from van du took our ideas over there and they've been doing it there ever since with full full cooperation and support from their municipal government and their police force over there in victoria chris backer a fantastic activist a, a medical cannabis user a burn survivor in halifax recognized the needs in his community and what we were doing here was inspired to start the cannabis substitution program east coast over two years now they've been handing out hundreds of care packs every week to people that need it and will come and get it mary mccarty fantastic human being was here in vancouver and baking for us she came all the way from the eastern seaboard to to join us at the csp she baked for us baked her little heart out for, for so long and provided so much of what we needed here to sustain the program and get the, the meds to the people that need it had to go back east for family reasons and started a csp up in london ontario she ran it for several months and now it's been handed over to william hicks and his people over there the volunteers that are helping him everybody does what they're doing but volunteering mary never made a penny i never made a penny nobody's making any money off of this we, we love that we can give back and we can help we hate that we don't get support from the government and we're fired up and and serious about making sure it happens with or without them but thanks to mary there's a csp in london ontario that's going strong and has been going for several months she's now moved to winnipeg thanks to legacy 420 she's got a huge box of donations and other people that are helping her there as well and there'll be a winnipeg csp coming right up she's already doing some street outreach work there other people other places ward taylor in sudbury timmins ontario has has a some sort of a csp going i hear there's one in california as well but with respect to canada they're going to pop up all over the place people are understanding that we have to take matters into our own hands we have to make this work ourselves because the government's not going to help us with it 
our family members are dying at alarming rates because of a prohibition policy that uh, needs to stop and we're not going to stop until it does so that's what's going on there we are a force we are legion if ever we were seriously threatened i know that there's hundreds of yourselves that would join in and stand up and you know help us like i'm hoping that you're going to stand up and help out with ted smith and with michelle and doug and the other the other people who are also being seriously oppressed by this this criminal takeover of the cannabis industry by a bunch of unethical greedy hateful bastards we can do this so at this time i think we should go out and have a quick visit with the uh, people in the rv and do our regular update with the healing wave uh, csp ganja mobile so let's try and do that oh we can do that all we have to do is turn this around all right uh right there okay and there you go you know what you're doing oh yeah okay <clears throat> we're good Well, here we are. Uh, this is uh, downtown Vancouver, right close to uh, Maine and Hastings. For those of you who don't know, it's one of the largest central uh, drug-dealing uh, areas in the world. And, uh, the epicenter of the drug overdose deaths. Although I must say that the uh, epidemic is reaching into all communities, uh, rich and poor, as there's people struggling with addictions uh, throughout all of this uh, demographic as well. So this is our Ganja Mobile come to call home for so long it's more than 15 and a half months now since we moved out of the store and into the RV we've been supplying uh, hot, low cost and no cost cannabis eight hours a day six days a week ever since then 15 and a half months we have the lovely Jennifer Nelson to work in the window my favorite little uh, neon sign how are you doing Thanks to Mr. Yeah. Glenn Wells. Oh, the, the little yeah. sign, yeah, yeah. Uh, that could have been my hand over the uh, mic there, Neil, sorry. <laughs> he goes, did you change the audio? That was a Christmas gift. It was a Christmas gift, yes. We just spent our second Christmas in the RV. Yep, yeah, yeah. And it's shining gray, green on the screen, nice. <laughs> more than enough for people and you could take some home with you and do your own little outreach and, and that, that was the first outreach of, of the csp is, is that for sure and i love the way that works so. yeah actually i guess to be accurate i was the first outreach for the csp <laughs> because i always had a truck full of crown of its edibles and stuff and i would all yeah, there was many people that i was helping out along the way as well i did do I guess it's okay to say it now. At the time, I didn't want anybody to know because resources were stretched and my time was limited. I did as much as I could. But yes, I did deliver some care packs as well as just at Van Du um, because I had the ability to do that. I had them with me. And then you ended up having the ability to have things with you and you got to feel some of that as well. Uh, may he rest in peace. Very, very sweet man. I, I yeah, I love Daniel too. But there was a lot of times where he was in too much pain and couldn't make it uh, to the lineup. But that was when I was still working at the getaway, and so I would see him there a lot of the time after. And so I started making sure that I'd carry some stuff with me, and like it literally made him cry several times. There was a lot of people in our lineup that weren't even getting it for themselves. Yeah. You know, but they were lining up because other people needed it more than them, and yeah. you know, had mobility issues and what have you. Uh, there was a lot of very wonderful Samaritan-type gestures at that place as well. Yeah, there were times like where we, we would do a smoke shed, a sesh up front after, and where it was all bad, but there was people that would, you know, still be hanging around, and they would see somebody that came, open the other one, and oh, I missed out, God damn it, nah. and so they would give them something out of their own package. And and lot, lots of times we would have that as well. People would, you know, oh man, and I, I'd have, I'd, I'd find one thing for them or something. You know? Yeah. It was, it was a beautiful time of helping people for sure, and it's, it's grown to here where we get to do it eight hours a day, six days a week. You work all of those shifts, you know, you're here every day. And uh, yeah, what a trooper for doing that, for sure. 
Uh, the neighborhood loves you. You're the mother of the neighborhood. You're the den mother of us people. <laughs> Even though I'm too old to have a den mother probably now. <laughs> now for sure, officially. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to go to the back door and see what happens right, there. Let's go back door. Let's go All see. right, let's see under. So this is, this is the CST door of the RV. And uh, I got my signs out. I've had them up all year now. This oh, yeah, is, uh, you got the signs up, eh? Yeah. There we go. I think it's important to so you see these signs. See what we're doing. You know what, Neil. So, uh, I like to communicate that. This is where you come if you're a member of the CST. We have 266 members at this point. We've been stuck on that number for a long time. We don't really want to move off it until we get proper permission because we don't know if we can sustain more than that. Sometimes we get fairly low on what we have for donations for people, although we've never run out and we're, we're in pretty good shape. But we also make sure everybody that doesn't get to be a member still gets at least 100 milligrams a day and that's what the members get oh, as well. Good. Yeah. So that we've got John Murray's muffins and, and Michael the Cookie Monster's cookies that we give out from the side window for people that aren't part of the program. Uh, they also get a joint. So the, there's really the, not much difference, although the CSP members, they get to choose, and we'll show you what's going on with that in a minute. Okay. Other people, they just get a muffin, a cookie, or a joint, and a joint. Okay. But if you come back here and you know the secret knock, this is what happens. <laughs> well, that's a full knock. That's a full knock. Not too late. If we no, 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 that was a very nice. That was a full knock. You said fourth one, brother. Because I know that, well, not necessarily yet. Because so I, I know that you have to be on time. No, you don't. Yeah. It really likes people to be on time. He gets grumpy around seven o'clock. Oh, so you don't want to come after that uh, if you can help it. But, uh, you know, you come before seven. The only other thing besides knowing the secret knock, and really any knock is the secret knock. Yeah. Is, you know, we'll, we'll open the door for any yeah. talk. But you got to know your number. That's yeah. another one. We have these skill testing questions. So you got to know your number. And so if they know their number, what do they get to choose from? Well, if they know their number, then I'll look the number up and see how many cases. No, you don't. Because you know everybody's number almost no, by I, now. And then if you would have to look most of them up, I know. Well, I know that. their number, and I know what they've been here. Your, yeah. Your number doesn't match up today. That's so right. I don't so he goes back in the book and just yeah. sees if he's not sure to yeah. see if they've been yeah. here within he the four days. numbers are supposed to be here today. Yeah. And so if they if they qualify and they can answer all the skill testing questions, they get to choose. Oh, yeah. so what's, what's, what's your number? Are you 001? I am not a CSP. <laughs> I, I, I was within the top for three or four yeah. of, uh, of Dana's dispensary. There you go. Yeah, got some uh, caramels here. These caramels here are from uh, Robert. They're 300 million. So those are from somewhere in Neverland. Yeah, somewhere in Neverland. That's Green Wilderness. Yeah. Right on. Right on. Right. <laughs> 150 are the low dose ones. <laughs> the, the 300s were a mistake, by the way. Yeah, it was a miscalculation in the formula. Uh -oh. So we're, we have them available and they're marked accordingly. You know, a guy that uses about 150 milligrams every night for sleep, his name's Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> 300 milligrams is going to start right here. Wow. wow. Yes. I have some right here. I have some of these. Uh, lead one looks like leaves. These ones. Right here are one to one, right? There's 100 milligrams right there. Oh, oh, 50 CBD? CD, 50 of THC. Okay. Then I have some brownies from Rebecca. Yeah. Got no, no, Roberta, right? Roberta. And, and are those from, yeah, those are probably still Roberta's. We've yeah, made some are. of our own now. She's had a problem with her oven. Her oven broke down, so we've taken over the manufacture yeah, of those ones, ourselves. These ones right here, those ones right here, these ones that are skinny. Right. Maybe that's Casey. that's Casey. Casey made a bunch for us. Right. I see. And then I have some cookies for Robert. These are 125 milligrams. Uh, these are uh, peanut, butter, wow. peanut butter chocolate chip. Nice. Then I have some of Joe's, uh, Joe Pepper's uh, muffins. These are 50 milligrams each. Nice. They're very nice. Oh, that's a nice looking tray. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's you definitely get a lot of out on that tray. <laughs> you have a lot of thankful people part of our program. They they still can't believe that they they can come and just get free cannabis, but that's how it should be. So Dirty Dave has supplied us with a, a number of these caps. People love them. They work very very well. Yeah. 
Yeah. I was here last week when he got them off. Yeah, and he's also given us some five milligram ones so people that want a lower dose can, can have a lower dose, and that's 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 important. These ones are lighter. These are five milligrams. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're very yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Oh sure. Yeah. 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 It's activated. It's activated. Yeah, it's activated. Yeah. And uh, Carly Thiessen, uh, uh today sent us a bunch of uh, CBD. Yeah, CBD. There, uh, Haley's Comet. CBD. Oh nice. So we'll have those available for people for the next year as well. So that's awesome. Very good. And we have topicals and suppositories and other things like that. So you know, we try to have everything that people need. People need different things. Yeah. Uh, not everything works for everybody at all. Here's a bride and soul. And one of the things we're now learning with this new Fecal Institute is, is that the basis of edibles uh, needs to be as best as can be. And yeah. if you start with good organic, clean plants, and you have a great process in manufacturing your, your fecal, and then you use that in the, in the products that we're, we're giving to people for ed edibles, it really is the cutting edge of medicine for people using natural plants. And, and fecal is full extract cannabis oil, That's not exactly fecal like you might be thinking. Right? <laughs> people are going to come to know that pretty fast. Yes, That's yes. What so talking. why we're educating them now, right? We'll see you on the other side. Okay, thanks, guys. Okay. Going in? Okay. <laughs> you broke the light. You didn't break the light. Just stand it over there. Yeah, sure. No, no, no. Stick it over here. Yeah. It's a little bright. It is bright. Ah. I'm, not, I'm not anywhere near as bright as the light is. Oh, look at that. It's 419 on there. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty just, just so you guys know, there you go, it's one minute to 420. Yeah, it's always 420 somewhere. Uh, that's how we see it. It's always 420. There's the gang. Hi, guys. Yeah, that's way too bright. There we go. Yeah. It's way too bright. That's way too bright. Really there you go. It's too bright. So you gotta oh, it's warmer in here. Hold that thing down a little bit. I look so real good today. <laughs> I got that song, actually. It's a really good song. Yeah, I love that song. It's a good way to start your morning. I look real good today. <laughs> Pocket full of bad jeans. looking in the mirror. It's yeah, in. yeah. It is gone, yeah. <laughs> so, George, yeah, how's the rolling going? Oh, what do we got now? I'm done rolling for the day. Are you? Oh, another birthday interruption. You know the kind of young whippersnapper. <laughs> there you go, the kind of young whippersnapper. Yeah. Uh, that's, awesome. that's a birthday gift all on its own. I <laughs> know, eh? You have to frame it. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling young today. You guys are making me feel young today. Oh, that's good. It's a great day to have a great day. It is. It's a great day I'm, to have a great I'm day. I'm sorry, just, just zooming in the card. Yeah. People get to share my birthday with me. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And you got lots of signatures. Oh, look at, oh, that. look at that. Nice. Nice. Oh, I think there's a lot of love in that card. I think so, too. <laughs> there's a lot of love in that card. All right. Thank you, everybody. It's been a lot of fun here at the Wheeling Wave RV for the last 15 months. Uh, well, with the CSP, uh, I think we'd be having just as much fun inside the store. In fact, I think we'd be having a lot more fun in the store. We wouldn't feel so frustrated about what we're not able to do because the RV is cramped conditions here. The, the limit on how many people can be members. Uh, they're not have, being able to have a bank account for so many other good reasons for being able to give people, uh, you know, proper receipts for donations and other things. It's just, I don't make we, so we want to be in the store, but this has been a really cool... Know. 15 months of becoming family with each other for sure and uh, and really you know solidifying our our place in in the history i think of uh, of, of the, the march towards low barrier access community cannabis stores uh, that needs to happen uh, we're here to, to work on it till it does i hope a whole bunch of other people will do the same thing uh, this really needs to happen. You can help us. Uh, you can write us a letter to uh, either the health ministry, uh, um, the new minister of mental health and addictions, uh, Health Canada, uh, Benoit Seguin in the uh, special licensing and exemptions division of Health Canada, uh, your local MP, your local MLA, uh, your doctor, the media. There's so many different places you can you can write a letter, make a phone call, have a conversation, go down in person. This is important stuff. There's people dying. It could be touching you next uh, if it hasn't already. 
and on behalf of all of those that uh, you know we need to stand up for like a lot of people can't fight for their rights and a lot of people can't speak for what they need and for those of us that can it's important that we do that uh, on behalf of those people so please join me in in this quest to to have the right to access nature as a free human being uh, in ways that don't include uh, lining the pockets of the, the corporate elite. And I want to thank the people that uh, made this possible, all the donators. It's so important uh, for people to donate, especially those other CSPs across Canada. If you can help them in Halifax or in London, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, you know, they're, they're on tenuous ground, uh, barely making it work each week as it goes. I, we were like that ourselves for the first couple of three years. Uh, so donate if you can, write letters if you can, uh, do your part. Thanks to Cannabis Culture for allowing me to have this platform and, and, and get these words out because I think it's so important that we have something like this that people can share and, and share this with the rest of the world, with your friends and families, so that they too can have an idea of what's going on here, that, that the fight is not over and that the fight is being carried on and we need people to help us with that. And we can do this and we can win this. And if we don't, we're, the future generations are not going to be served very well by their governments or by their access to cannabis. You can um, save lives worldwide instead of just in your area, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, thanks to Anil. Uh, he's been such a rock uh, helping us with the show or helping me with the show since the beginning. He's the only reason that it, it happened in the first place. And it's the only reason it continues to happen probably. Uh, and Anil, I've got uh, another task for you coming up with this new uh, FECO Institute group. Uh, I think we need you. I'm going to be con uh, contacting you about that real soon. So thanks everybody who's watching and uh, for all those that are out there, uh, do your best to be sane in this world, to keep your eyes wide open and thinking about what's right and wrong. Don't hold other people's views against them in any hateful ways. We're all doing the best we can. Uh, be kind to yourselves, be kind to each other, and always, most important, have as much fun as you can. Cheers.